This is Professor Ryan Paul, and this lecture is on building an argument. Continuing on from our discussions of different types of evidence, analyzing the debate, establishing your research question, etc., etc. So now it's how do you put it all together? Let's first review the basic components of an argument. Again, one way to frame an argument is to begin with your premises, the facts or ideas or assertions upon which you're basing your conclusion, and then those build to the conclusion that you're trying to prove. Of course, there are also always going to be assumptions. Those are implied premises, ideas that are not explicitly stated, but help you connect your premises, all the different facts and so forth, to the idea that you're trying to prove. A very simple example that we've seen before, we have our premise, humans are mortal. We have another premise, Socrates is human. And we come to the conclusion, therefore, Socrates is mortal. And this is a fairly obvious argument, but we could, if we wanted to, spell out what the assumption is. That is that all members of a particular group, human, share the qualities of that group, being mortal. So if humans are mortal and Socrates is a human, he will share the quality of being mortal with all other humans. Very simple premise, premise, conclusion. Now, a slightly different way of looking at arguments that we've also looked at. So it's basically just a different organization and slightly different terminology. So instead of conclusion, we talk about the claim. That's the position about the specific topic or situation that you're trying to prove. And you support that because of reasons which are based on evidence. So the, the reasons in your evidence are your premises. So the reason, again, are, supports the claims by asserting some fact or idea. And the evidence is the data or information that supports the validity of the reason. And then, of course, there's the warrant. That's the principle that connects the reason to the claim, uh, shows the relevance of the reason. And this is sometimes left implicit or unspoken. So here's another simple example, which again, we've seen before. The claim, we should go inside. What's the reason to support that uh, idea? It looks like it will rain. What's the evidence to demonstrate that it looks like it's going to rain? Dark clouds. So we have our claim, our reason, and our evidence. And the warrant, that is the implied idea that connects the reason to the claim, why is it that it looks like it will rain, means we should go inside, the warrant could be something as simple as, it is unpleasant to be outside when it rains. So that's the logic that connects your reason to the claim. So what do you need to make a strong argument? First, you need a clear claim. That is, how do you answer the primary research question that you're investigating, such as what are the effects of uh, raising the minimum wage? Is that positive or negative? And then the consequences of your answer. What should we do or what should we understand differently based on your answer? So if you're investigating, uh, again, minimum wage, after you've investigated the effects, your claim would be we should raise it or we shouldn't raise it, whatever it might be. You need compelling reasons. So why would someone support this claim? What reasons would a logical, thoughtful person need in order to take your side of the issue? What would they need to be persuaded of in order to think that this is a good course of action? And then finally, you need strong evidence. What data or information can you show your readers that proves that the reasons that you've given are actually the case, that is, that they are true. What's the data, what's the real information out there that can prove one way or another that the reasons you're asserting are true, are valid and compelling. So for the rest of this lecture, I'm going to work through uh, an example argument, a very simplified version, in order to show how we could construct our paper. So our topic is, let's say, the legal status of marijuana. And the question that we're asking is, should marijuana be legal or illegal? What are the positive or negative effects of it? Um, so that's what we're researching. So to go back to that framework of how do you frame your question and the consequences of it, I've put it into this format. I am studying the effects of marijuana. That's our basic area of, of inquiry. 
because I want to know what its positive and negative effects are. That's the question that we're asking. That's the specific information that we're looking for and researching in order to help my reader decide if marijuana should be legalized. That's the course of action that we're going to be suggesting one way or another. Those are the consequences of the research that we're doing. So when you're thinking about this question, what do you need to prove in order to answer whether or not marijuana should be legal? So you think about what are the reasons that would support either side, legalizing it or keeping it illegal, banning it. So in order to support the legalization of marijuana, you would probably have to prove to someone that legalizing it will have positive effects that can be uh, medical, economic, social, criminal, etc. You have to also, or one other, another way that would support that idea is to demonstrate the lack of or the minimal presence of negative effects. So showing that claims that it negatively affects economy, crime, health, etc. are false or weak. And point to any problems that are associated with keeping it illegal. What are the problems caused by our current status? How would those be solved if we legalized marijuana? If you were to take the other side of this issue, um, it's essentially the opposite, right? What reasons would support someone maintaining the ban on marijuana, maintaining its illegal status? Well, you'd have to demonstrate that it's negative, that it has negative effects. You could demonstrate the lack of or the minimal presence of positive effects, and then show what problems might result from making it legal. So these are the types of reasons that you're looking for. So it's not just any information or any data related to marijuana, but information that'll support reasons on one side or the other of this debate. So now that we know some reasons that we're looking for, um, what are some more specifics? How can we get more particular in terms of the areas that we'll investigate to find either positive or negative effects, problems, solutions, etc.? So what are some general topics related to marijuana that we might investigate? In what areas might marijuana and the, its legal status have some sort of effect? Uh, well, obviously there's health, and that could be physical or mental health. Uh, there's legal and criminal issues that we can investigate. There are social and economic issues that we can investigate. And these are not the only ones. We could investigate economic issues, historical issues, all sorts of other things. But these are just some ideas uh, given the argument that we're trying to make, whether we're for or against making marijuana legal or illegal. Now we can get even more specific. Now that we know the types of reasons we're looking for and the arenas or areas in which we might find um, evidence, we can start asking specific questions. Questions that we'd want to answer because the answers to them would support our claim one way or the other. So thinking about health, we could ask, does marijuana have long-term effects on physical health? Lungs, cardiovascular system, the brain, etc. cetera. Uh, does marijuana have long-term effects on mental health? And that could be questions of memory, addiction, intelligence, et cetera. So there's some crossover there. Uh, just the question of is marijuana addictive could be a whole nother issue, uh, uh, even though it's a subtopic both of physical health and mental health, but that might be something to investigate on its own. Uh, is it dangerous to drive, operate machinery, etc., while under the influence of marijuana, and just how dangerous is it? And what are the medical uses of marijuana? For example, cancer treatments, epilepsy, glaucoma, etc. So these are some of the questions we can ask under the topic of health. What are some possible areas that we can investigate in terms of the health effects of marijuana that could help us decide whether or not it should be legal or illegal? Some legal and criminal questions that we might ask. Does marijuana use contribute to contrib uh, criminal behavior? So again, this could be asked as psychological effects, addiction, um, looking at marijuana as a gateway drug. Those are questions that we could ask. Uh, does the sale of marijuana contribute to other forms of criminal behavior? So maybe indirectly, violent crime committed by uh, marijuana dealers or committed in, in attempts to sell or purchase uh, marijuana or transport it. Those are more indirect criminal uh, causes or criminal events related to it.
Uh, we could ask how many people are arrested, prosecuted, and imprisoned for marijuana. So issues of the prison population, is there any overcrowding uh, in prisons that's caused or related to marijuana prosecutions? What are the costs to the government of prosecuting marijuana use um, in terms of expenses for the police, training, imprisonment, and so forth? Does the prosecution of marijuana violate other laws or rights? So this could be uh, uh, forces to ask uh, constitutional issues. And there are, again, many other questions that we could ask. Does prosecution of marijuana lead to lower or higher rates of recidivism, that is, repeat criminal actions? Um, is there evidence that the prosecution or punishment of marijuana has any effect on diminishing the sale and so forth? So these are questions, again, the answers to which can help us decide one way or the other what our course of action should be on this topic. And then we get to social and economic questions that we can ask. What are the costs related to marijuana use, prosecution, etc.? So legal costs, costs from missed work, people who have to go to court or who are in jail so they can't go to work or they even lose their job. Uh, property damage or theft related to marijuana use, sale, prosecution, and so forth. Um, are there economic benefits to legalizing marijuana? So we could look at questions of increased tax revenues, uh, marijuana growth and sale as an investment opportunity if it was legal, um, what sort of employment a legal marijuana industry would create. Uh, does the marijuana plant have other uses? Uh, paper, other products, rope, all sorts of things like that that have historically been made with hemp. Uh, that could be another economic as well as environmental uh, issue related to this question. Are any segments of society more likely to be arrested, prosecuted, imprisoned, etc., for marijuana than another? So this could be a question of, is there racial or economic bias in the legal system? Uh, again, this is a question that, all these are questions that they don't directly or, or individually answer the, the overall issue of should it be legal or not one way or the other, but answering these questions and then putting together an argument based on the different answers can help us to make our decision based on sound reasons and compelling evidence. All right, that's the end of part one. In part two, we'll look at how to start constructing the argument by looking at our sources and the evidence and what sorts of reasons our evidence can support.